Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Daily Market Update Show, and where I do technical analysis on SPY QQQ, as well as what's currently the popular tickers that are affecting the market. So those would be the big tech stocks, Apple, Google, NVIDIA, Amazon, Microsoft. I'll be doing those ones today quickly, and on Sunday, I'll be doing a detailed one for the breakdown of all those six tech stocks, as well as NVIDIA and Tesla, and yeah, all six of those. And I'll be giving you guys support and resistance guys to potentially play off of into later this week, as well as I will be um, giving you guys the most likely scenario going forward. And if you guys learn anything from this video, feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Those are always appreciated. All right, let's get started. So right now we are looking at um, Tesla. So before we get then to that, let's take a look at some of the data first. So tomorrow we'll be able to get this data uh, for this week. And I'm assuming that we're probably going to get something in the 30s now for the bullishness due to how much we've been running for the past couple of weeks. And that potentially can um, make market participants wanted to get bullish. And that's when the market would reverse. So tomorrow we'll come back to this data and we'll see the dates get updated. And my guess is this, the green one would probably be in the 30s and this would be a little bit lower. And let's get into the um, rate hikes. So rate hikes is still exactly the same as last week. Um, pause for uh, next week, Wednesday. You can see uh, in six days, our FOMC meeting is coming in, as well as CPI data is going to be on Tuesday. So make sure to watch for both of those. And the inflation data did sort of tick up a little bit last month. So we'll see if um, it continues to potentially tick up or tick down. So that's going to be really key as well as we have priced in high this week. And also a side note for the Canadian bank actually raised a uh, raise today for 25 basis points. And so that's um, something new because they held last time. And so maybe that's what the Fed is doing as well, holding one time and then hike, continue to hike again. So we'll see what they'll do next week. So let's get into the chart. So today there's a lot to talk about. It's the very first um, notable bear day for at least the tech stocks. And I'll talk about the rotations going on in these sectors throughout the market a little bit later after I do the technical analysis for um, all these stocks. And if you, if you want to skip ahead, uh, feel free to put the timestamps in the comments so you can skip to any of the tickers or um, topics that you want to. Just click the timestamps and it'll jump to that uh, timestamp. All right, so Tesla actually holding a lot better today than the overall um, tech sector. You can see QQQ was down 1.6%. Tesla was up 1.7%. Four seven percent, so that means it's relatively stronger for the past today and the past couple of weeks. Just by doing Tesla divided by QQQ, you can see the relative strength throughout the entire week. Every day it was stronger than QQQ, and today look at that gap. It means uh, it was three point two percent gap between QQQ and uh, Tesla, which makes sense if you just do uh, one point four seven percent up minus the negative one point six percent for QQQ. That's the difference for the relative strength. So what are our next resistance levels? So this is the resistance zone that I'm looking at, which is the top of the zone, as well as this cluster of zone. So so where where would the uh, most volume be traded in the zone? So we just go to the volume profile and just a quick drag across. Then we can see that um, these are all volume bars. And you can see these. this zone is the most um, volume trade in this zone. So you can see uh, this red line means it's the point of control. As well as see we're entering this um, bottom of this value area low, which is that blue line, which is the part that we tested today as well as the resistance. So we're getting back into that zone. So this would be the resistance, first resistance zone for me uh, between this 230 to 234 area. If we do break that, then obviously we're looking back up to this 250 range. But as of now, we don't have a, Kind of extended, so as well as we formed a monthly uptrend on Monday. So, and that's continuing. It's good for the bulls, meaning now we have room to pull back and potentially set the weekly um, higher low. To so zoom into the 15 minute time frame, you can see here. So, definitely held a lot better than QQQ for sure. Um, QQQ closed at the lowest day. And we have a 15 minute downtrend over here. And now it's a double bottom. So if we do break that, let's, see, let's zoom into the hourly for more clarity. Hourly chart is still an uptrend actually. So 
Tesla bullet hole holding pretty darn well. Big move down, setting the hourly lower high, meaning this high is lower than this high. And now the bulls play defense at that double bottom. So it did not confirm an hourly downtrend. So essentially that would be key. If we do see an hourly downtrend, then that would mean the daily top is set. Um, so if that breaks tomorrow, then we zoom out to the daily, meaning this, let me raise that so you can see better, meaning that this daily uh, top is likely in if the hourly downtrend confirms. And then we would pull back into consolidation and then potentially see what happens, how big of the pullback that would be. Obviously, if it's a shallow pullback, then it's just a shallow daily consolidation. We can have more continued upside. So that uh, once the hourly downtrend is set, then we um, zoom out to the daily and four hour to see how big of a pullback that's going to be determine our next move for Tesla. All right, and let's go to Google. So Google was a simple one to very clear on the uh, when I did a breakdown on Sunday. I was talking about this just chop range sideways, whichever way the uh, we break is going to have follow through. So we broke bull, and then, and then we have more resistance up here. And we once we sold back into this, you can see in the morning uh, when you can tell that the bulls, this green candle right here. And once we came back into that um, drop zone, you can see just the bear volume just picked up because it essentially means it's a bull break with no follow through. So we broke here, and it was just kind of like sideways, couldn't get over it. Tried it again, and nope. And then once it came back, you can see all these um, bear volume coming in. You can see on the chart here. So once we came back into this chop zone, when we broke above, meaning it's a bull break lacking follow through. So that's the initial win for the bears. And um, tomorrow we'll see if we can actually break the low of this chop zone. You can see we just headed right to there and couldn't really break it. Obviously, bears have done a lot of work, the 5% or 3% drop. It makes sense for them to take a little bit of a breather at this support zone that was previous a strong support zone, right? All of these times that we bounce off of it for like a freaking months, right? So let's see, um, zoom into the 15 minutes. So you can see you've been holding it for the rest of the day here. But this is a potential um, four hour bear flag, if you ask me. Hourly probably more clear. Yeah, more of an hourly bear flag. So tomorrow if we break low of today and that low of that drop zone, we're likely heading down to the um, or lows, which would be this one right here. Although that's a little bit of, uh, let's see, do we have any supports along the way down? We don't have a lot of support on the way down. Did you see how, how little volume is trading this area? Just this two. And this is nothing either. Just a straight line up. So if we do break that, we're probably going to head down to this area and come back to test the high of this entire structure, which is this part right here. This is the 119 area. Obviously, we'll see if that's going to happen. It will need more QQQ weakness. It's only the first day of QQQ weakness. So that's only 2.6% away. So that could be very possible. Test the low of this part. Yep, 3.24%. Do that in one day if it's a bear day. Um, all right, let's take a look at Amazon. Also, very notable weakness today. All the tech. Big tech stocks are very weak today, 5.3% from the top to bottom. Um, let's zoom out to the daily. Essentially, we took out three days in one move uh, for Amazon. And did we lose the, let's see here, pivot. So this is the move up, this is the pivot. This is the move up. You can say this was the pivot. So we did lose the daily uptrend. So we're now in a neutral trend because we lost this pivot. And what the remember, I always talk about the size of the move. I mentioned all my videos. I was trying to hammer this guy, hammer this idea into you guys. So now we have a big enough move where the next bounce, now you guys can start scouting shorts for the. This would be the higher low, up lower than this high. And bears would potentially be scouting for the next move, move down due to the size of this move. Just like, just like this big move up here, when we pull back, bulls are scouting the higher low for the next move up. Now this big move down is giving us enough room when we bounce 
that um, we could potentially scalp the next move down. Obviously, this bounces over the over 50% of this move. Then the most likely scenario is a more of an equilibrium where the bulls can potentially take this back. So we don't want to see us bounce too much, um, roughly within 0.382 or 0.5 for the next move down. So I'll be watching for how much, and potentially we can get another leg down, then bounce. Um, we are testing that 12 mm line support, which has been bouncing off roughly. Just give me a second. So, all right, let's take a look at. I'm just going to take a look. NVIDIA. So, NVIDIA, talking about this uh, head and shoulders thing, but it didn't really play out, although it still played out in the bear side. Um, so, the four hour head and shoulders was uh, mentioned on Sunday. So, the potential you could play out and break right there. We didn't break to the to the downside there. It was more of like a chop and then a comeback. So, it formed an equilibrium. Just what I just drew this on Monday, and we had a bear break. And I talked about it yesterday how I didn't like how we bounced so much back in the end of the day. And so, essentially, we bounced this morning, just like every other tech stock. And then, interesting enough, we hit this top of this resistance zone again, and that was it. And the bears took over. Now, where are we looking at? We are actually below the neckline, so we are likely potentially. Going to test this low right here and tomorrow. So if we say we get a gap down open, bounce, retest this line, see if any bulls are going to buy it back up. If we reject from that, then I'm looking back right down here. Low of this line would be 366.35. And that would give us a, uh, this is already a far downtrend confirmed. See, this is the um, set first move, bounce. Setting the lower high. Now we broke the prior low, so this is our downtrend confirmed. You can see right at this spot where we broke. Zoom in, I can show you guys how much bears follow through. Give me a second, delete this. In time frame. So when we broke that four hour downtrend right here, it was right here, it was trying to hold all this um, about like two hours. And once we broke that, I can see all this bear volume coming in once we broke that level. So we'll see if the bears can continue. So this hourly move is really big. So we're likely waiting for potentially another bounce to scout the hourly lower high. Yep, this will be the next level. And then we'll probably fill some of this gap if we do break that level. This gap, there's no, there's no volume, there's no volume trader here at all. Pretty much just that, uh, so it can be a pretty fast uh, drop if you ask me. But uh, obviously, we're not going to just drop 30% down back to fill that entire gap from that 30% move when we had the this move, right? Okay, we have given back also 37%. We have given back 10%. And we are, let's see, we are 18% from that move. Of course, we're not going to just shoot all the way straight down to, to this gap with everything. But if we do break here, then there's the potential of a quick flush somewhere to in between here. And then we'll find support somewhere over here in this zone. It will go it will go like sideways. But before that, if when you break this zone, it will likely be a big flush, a quick one. Hopefully that happens not because there is no uh, real support back here. So what I'm guessing, it will be uh, right here. So if we break this. Then we'll have a quick flush into roughly top of this zone. So let's take a look at where that um, the volume is trading in that area is. Let's see, so there's not a lot of volume even traded up here either. So this could be a psychological level though, because it was all time highs. So we can flush back to his prior all time highs and then potentially chop around here a little bit. And then if we do break that, then we're coming back to this value area high of this zone, which coincides with this prior resistance zone. I would take probably that until next week. So I'll do an update for you guys on Sunday, as always, of the very detailed one of all these tech stocks. But as of now, I just go through a little bit faster because I got to go through the markets as well. Apple actually held a little bit stronger. So potentially, if Apple starts to roll over tomorrow, you can see it was only down like 0.78%. 
So potentially the app will break that two day 12 EMA that I've been talking about. I mean, not even close yet, but let's say we even just come back to there. That's 1.76%. That's going to drag you down even more, right? So, but of course, if we just have a two day, two red days and everything bounces again, then there is not um, the uptrends would still be intact for some of these uh, big tech stocks. So we'll keep an eye on that and we'll see um, how Apple trades. So there's not a lot of red flags for Apple, but for the other ones are a little bit more red flags for me, the Amazon, Google, and uh, Microsoft. So Microsoft actually broke the its uptrend today. You can see um, this was his daily uptrend. Wave down, wave up again, wave down, wave up again. So this was the pivot that it broke. So when it broke this pivot from this wave up, wave down, this was the pivot and it broke that. It, broke the daily uptrend, just like um, Google did and Amazon did. So now we're all neutral trends for these guys, except for Apple at the moment. Yeah, except for Apple is still in an uptrend. And we have now tested this support right here. You can see, and obviously we dropped so much that um, Bears needs a little bit of a breather as well, just like every other tech stocks that dropped today, which is zoom in. See, so we kind of slow down once we hit that uh, support zone. And uh, we're a little bit red actually in the after hours for some of these stocks, but potentially we get a gap down tomorrow morning and then we bounce right off the morning and then potentially stick out that lower high. So we'll see if that ends up actually happening. And let's take a look. Hourly, hourly big enough move for the next bounce. We're scouting a daily higher low, just like every stock. So now it's time for you guys to start shorting. If you, you guys been itching to short, now we're just, you know, now it's finally there's one big move from the bears that you guys can potentially scout that next um, lower high here when you add your shorts on these stocks. But uh, make sure to set that stop loss. So let's take a look at um, the reason I'm saying that because it's you can just look at spy. Spy not there was no red flag for spy today. I mean, obviously QQ now was not was down one point six percent. Spy was only down zero point five three five percent. But we're still within the uh, this week's range. So as long as we don't break this um, double bottom zone, there's no red flags for spy. So the financial sector and the XLU utility sectors and energy sector was holding up spy today, and so no red flags until everything starts to roll down together. That's why the VIX today was not up that much because other sectors and small cap sectors were holding up, not holding up, but like small tax sector was green. Sectors in the SPY was also holding um, SPY pretty well. So the only red flag today was QQQ. And we'll see if if QQQ weakness continues, will the money rotate into SPY? And that would be a good sign for the bulls. Or we're all, will all the money start to rotate out as well? So that's going to be... The most key thing for me to look at um, into this week and next week. As you guys can see, for QQQ, um, this triple top, we couldn't get over. There's a wick here, there's a wick here, wick here, wick here. And this is also the golden pocket resistance that I've been talking about for SPY and QQQ. And today we finally got that rejection. And now we are still in a daily uptrend. We need to break this pivot before we can call it back into a neutral trend. So those. This zone is definitely what I'm up looking for tomorrow. So we'll likely potentially get the drop down to here, bounce, and then come back down to retest it to see if we want to break it or not. So that's up to the bears. Um, they need to prove to the bulls to see if we can break that into the zone or not. So now this moving is big enough where we can potentially scout that lower high. You can see IWM today. That's what I was talking about, the money rotating. You can see this, how green... Uh, I was up 1.5% while QQ down 1.6%. Uh, so we'll see if the money continues to rotate around. If the money continues to rotate around, there is no red flags in the market uh, other than obviously cool things cooling off, being QQ being a little bit too overbought with how extended we are, right? So we'll see if the bears will continue to show up in the tech sector and will SPY be able to hold up if um, despite the um, QQ weakness. All right, so I got for you guys for today. And feel free to comment below if you as well, if you guys have any questions, and subscribe if you guys made it this far. And have a great rest of you guys' day. I will see you guys tomorrow for the update.